Recorded during a contentious time, which often had the guys in the studio individually instead of as a group, the Beatles' White Album was an enigma. While there were some really good songs on it, certainly, there were also tracks like Wild Honey Pie and, of course, the avant-garde Revolution 9 and some others that, for all the world, sounded to many listeners like studio trash. Nevertheless, it remains one of the most popular albums published by the group. One of the songs that is difficult to classify is the Paul McCartney Western saga of Rocky Raccoon. Was it a joke? Was it art on a vinyl record? Was it desperation for material? Or was it just plain having fun? Although some of you Beatles fans may know at least some of this stuff to follow, please stick with me for the next few minutes as I expose 10 things that you didn't know about Paul McCartney's tongue-in-cheek ballad, Rocky Raccoon. Number 10. The original version had a more rambling exposition as a beginning. Besides some different lyrics and the absence of overdubs, the working version of this song featured a longer exposition at the beginning, which also placed the character in Minnesota instead of the black mining hills of Dakota. You can hear a version of that on the Anthology 3 album. Number 9. Donovan Leach was a collaborator. But how? It is documented by several sources that both John and Paul spent a lot of time with Donovan Leach when they were in India, and that three-way synergy yielded ideas for several songs, among them John's Julia and Paul's Rocky Raccoon. Paul McCartney has said that the three collaborated on the lyrics, but gives no specifics as to Donovan's contribution. According to Beatles historian Kenneth Womack, McCartney drew his inspiration for the song from Robert Service's poem, The Shooting of Dan McGrew. Donovan remains uncredited and undocumented for his contributions, but whatever they were, it appears that they were of a more abstract nature. Number 8. The sheet music cover picture isn't Paul. One would expect that the singer's picture would be used for the cover, but for some unknown reason, there was no attempt made to coordinate the sheet music cover pictures with the group member who performed the song. The cover shows George and Ringo, but not Paul. One would think that if they wanted a generic cover, they would have put all four of them on it. Uh, go figure. Number 7. The character's original name was different. When Paul originally wrote the draft lyrics, the title was Rocky Sassoon. After he finished the draft, he changed the name because Rocky Raccoon sounded more like a cowboy to him. Number 6. Mickey Dolenz used it as a lullaby. Mickey Dolenz of the Monkees says that he sang Rocky to his kids as a lullaby. The storybook lyrics and the length of the song worked well for bedding down the babes. When he sang it during a tour celebrating the White Album, he actually cried on stage as he recalls singing it for his kids 25 years prior. Number 5. Rocky Raccoon is the last recorded Beatles song to feature John Lennon's harmonica playing. As fate would have it, John Lennon's final recorded harmonica performance as a Beatle occurred on the overdubbed session for Rocky Raccoon on August 15th, 1968. John also contributed as a harmonium player on the track, actually playing the same instrument in the studio that had been used for the background to We Can Work It Out. Number four. George Harrison sang background on this, but that's it. The vocal chorus overdubbed during the final verse included John, Paul, and George. George Harrison, present in the studio for the vocal overdubs, didn't contribute anything else to the recording, preferring instead to remain in the control booth with George Martin. Number three. Neither the Beatles nor Paul McCartney as a soloist have ever performed it live. As cute as the song is, it's another Beatles tune that has remained a studio-only performance. 
In his 2021 book, The Lyrics, Paul stated, and I quote here, I keep meaning to do this song in concert since a lot of people request it. Maybe I will one of these days. Number two. It was one of the very few songs on the White Album that was recorded on four-track equipment. By 1968, a 3M M23 8-track recorder was installed at EMI Abbey Road, and a 3M M59 was installed at Trident Studios, which were both used on the White Album. This track, however, was recorded on the venerable and reliable Studer J37 4-track machine at EMI Abbey Road. Also, because of the ad-lib nature of the lyrics, the main track of the song had to be done front to back in one take. It took take nine to achieve one that finally had the vocal elements flow the way that Paul wanted them to. A reduction was done, freeing up tracks for overdub on the next day. And now, number one. Paul didn't play the honky-tonk piano overdub. Many fans believe that the honky-tonk piano part near the end of the song was played by Paul, but it was not. The fill part was played by George Martin with his wound-up piano technique, recording the piano at half speed in an octave low to give it a clinkier sound when played back at full speed. It was the same recording technique that he used to mimic a harpsichord on In My Life, the difference being in how he played the piano. By 1968, the guys had become a little less focused on commercial viability and more so on creative exploration. If you played Rocky Raccoon for any 1965 Beatles fans, they would likely dismiss you as a lunatic because, as anyone could tell, that recording couldn't possibly have been done by the same guy that did yesterday. Yes, it was certainly different. Hey, thanks for watching the video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please click that like button and leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. This would be a great time to subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And if you have, please consider upgrading your subscription to channel member status and become a Trooper Fellow. If you do, it will give you exclusive members only perks. For more information, just check out the members tab on the channel homepage. Thanks again for watching.